New York City is a thriving metropolis of 8.5 million residents, supported by hundreds of thousands of healthcare workers. In a city this large, the health department works with many partners to ensure everyone stays safe. From infectious disease outbreaks to natural disasters to terrorist attacks, emergencies happen every day. But what happens during large-scale emergencies affecting the health of hundreds of New Yorkers? I consider the healthcare system to be on the front lines of our response. Today's exercise was focused on a mass casualty incident. Hi, this is Pro Vimanchek. This is a drill. We've been working closely with our healthcare partners, and it's critical that we're ready should there be that type of incident in New York City. New York City's health department has been involved in doing planning with other city agencies. We work with hospitals, EMS, the Department of Education, and New York City Emergency Management. We always think of it in three tiers. We work across the whole healthcare system and address any system-wide gaps or issues. We've seen in a lot of disasters that the more successful we are, it's based on how well we communicate, coordinate, and collaborate. So far, you've received 36 patients. Okay. We did get a request from the fire department for bed status availability. It's really important to build those relationships during the planning process. But the fire department collaborates with all city agencies, and the Department of Health is critical to us in that they've created an infrastructure of support. So we have many different healthcare coalitions that we support. Network-based coalitions, which are networks of hospitals. Geographic-based coalitions that are based on the five boroughs in New York City. The Pediatric Disaster Coalition that is focused on the pediatric population. Children are overrepresented in disasters, whether they be natural or man-made. The Pediatric Disaster Coalition was tasked to work with all the hospitals in New York City to expand their resources so they can take care of, of the children who need those specialized resources. Writing a plan is never enough. It doesn't mean anything until you actually try it out. We are exercising many different components of the plan to see how they all fit together. I'm calling the PICU. This was a scenario that impacted large numbers of children. It involved 28 hospitals, as well as our other city partners. We're planning to get as exercise to really see where our holes in our game is. You really see exactly where the need is for various services when the system is stressed, which is a huge important thing to do prior to an actual disaster happening. The exercise was a success and really helped us to learn where our strengths are, but also where there are potential gaps that we need to address in the future. Without HPP funding, those types of exercises would never happen. It's not just funding today's activities, it's actually funding activities going back many years. It's absolutely critical, it saves lives. One thing that's really important is to have a great team. That's why we do drills, why we do scenarios, why we practice. And that, I think, strengthens our leadership, which is from the ground up.